back on Steel and Vance. Do you remember where you were when you started to learn the stories of the bags of money being taken into casinos and for there to be these stacks of cash? Where's the cash coming from? Why is it happening? Oh, wait, it's coming in, it's being cleaned, and it's being used in our housing market. And I mean, that launched a whole uh, dirty money investigation into money laundering that David Eby, who's now our premier, sort of got off the ground along with Peter German, the investigator. And we all thought, okay, well, they're on top of it now and we shouldn't have to worry about it. Or maybe we, maybe we thought that. Well, now there's we a hoped. new twist. Yeah. And it has to do with mortgage fraud. It has to do with Canadian banks. Uh, and it has to do with realtors and uh, property developers. And anyway, what this is, is it's a whistleblower that has been uh, telling his story to investigative reporter Sam Cooper. And it's going to make again. your head go boom. Yeah. So we're going to bring Sam Cooper in. Again, we had him on last week. So thank you so much for giving us more of your time, Sam. Can you tell us who is involved and what they're doing? Yes. Um, first of all, you, you led with the images of hockey bags of cash, and it's appropriate because I broke that story. And what I've found here from a whistleblower inside HSBC Canada blew my mind in the same way. Uh, we're talking about fake income mortgages. Uh, these are uh, people involved in Chinese diaspora underground banking networks, the same people that were involved in those networks laundering the cash their methods have evolved. And so my whistleblower, who is in Toronto now, was working at an HSBC Canada branch during the pandemic, or just at the tail end of the pandemic, discovered massive loans uh, issued to people claiming remote work jobs in China, uh, salaries claimed of 500,000, 700,000 completely fake jobs. And yet this bank, and it's not the only one, uh, was handing out hundreds of millions of loans based on fake incomes. And, uh, you know, it's not just Toronto. What this whistleblower showed me is it's the same story that explains the mystery in Vancouver of where all these mortgages handed out as researchers found to people claiming housewife or uh, student. I've seen land titles that say scientist, CEO of real estate company. Uh, guys, I now know that most of these claim jobs in China are fake, and we're talking my estimates, supported by academics and criminologists, hundreds of billions of fake mortgages really uh, have pumped up Vancouver and Toronto real estate. The case is now closed. This is why we have a housing bubble. I think it's proven. It's unbelievable. It's mind blowing to think about as, as we're listening to you, Sam, again, breaking a story that bodes the question, begs the question indeed. I know that when I applied for my mortgage, I had to go buy out the lease on my car because I wasn't allowed to have that much of debt. And they double checked and triple checked all the way up and down the line. How is this happening? Is it willful blindness or is it just people lining their pockets? Well, it's both, I believe. First, let's look at the regulators. Uh, I had uh, seven prominent Canadian experts review my whistleblowers uh, documents and assessments one of them, Gary Clement, a former RCMP expert, said, look, uh, anyone else in Canada can't get uh, a loan of this type right. that's based on completely faked documents in another country. But the banks, due to the international nature of finance, have uh, accepted, turned a blind eye. And my source says, and I believe it's proven, the banks are complicit in this. We're talking about bankers, staffers on the inside, inside working in collusion with crime networks in China that verify and fake all of this completely fake information. So your question, I think, is where is FinTrack? Where's the Minister of Finance? Where's the RCMP? Nowhere to be seen. We don't have the laws to support this. And uh, as Ross Alderson, the person that brought me to the bags of cash story, he's now in Australia. He came back to me, he said, uh, kudos to your whistleblower. What courage. I hope he's safe. And uh, Ross Alderson knew all along the banks were handing out uh, bank drafts to people that were the, these uh, gamblers from China in our casinos. This is what funded mortgages. But now we know the banks signed off on fraudulent loans. I should add here. Uh, let me just say HSBC Canada says they're an international bank at the forefront of uh, anti money laundering. If they detect a fraud, they'll uh, exit a client and they do. That's their story. Uh, I hope to talk to them and other banks about this.
Well, you know work. what, Sam? Your very, very uh, in-depth reporting has caught the eye of people in the House of Commons and a Conservative MP put it right to the Prime Minister. Let's listen in. How can the Prime Minister make housing more available and, f and affordable when fraudsters are buying up multiple homes? Why is his government ignoring the damage created by money laundering and mortgage fraud in Canada? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, just a few days ago, we reinforced and extended our foreign home buyers ban uh, to make sure that homes in Canada are used by Canadians to live in, not as investment vehicles for, uh, for foreign entities. And the Prime Minister went on talking about things they're doing to address housing prices. What did you think about his answer to the Conservative MP's question? I saw his answer uh, uh, really... I saw a little bit of fear in the prime minister because these revelations get right to the core of uh, how our banks uh, support Canada's economy and the level of fraud involved, uh, the level of corruption, systemic corruption, I believe will shock people. And this story is starting to show people how bad it is. And really when the prime minister talks about uh, banning foreign buyers, the whole point of my revelatory story is that it doesn't matter if you ban foreign buyers because the whole system, uh, as a FinTrack report, which is part of my story says, is money laundering has evolved in a way that people in the diaspora are using their accounts uh, as what is called money mules or straw buyers. People from other countries own homes in Toronto, Vancouver and Montreal through people in Canada. So you can't stop foreign buying unless you uh, do a full audit on our banking system and, and make sure people are doing due diligence, which they aren't. So therein lies the question moving forward. What are we learning that needs to change and evolve to try and stem the tide here? Because clearly very little has changed since those hockey bags full of money entered our casinos. Well, looking at uh, Vancouver especially, certainly we had the Cullen Commission in British Columbia. We had a lot of recommendations. Uh, we've seen the Premier, David Eby, who appeared to be very strong on anti-money laundering, uh, stand up some programs. But look, uh, my government sources, one of them quoted in this story, say it hasn't changed anything. Money laundering is up in Canada. Uh, it moves around. It's like playing whack-a-mole. You would need to change uh, federal laws in Canada so that we have uh, real laws against transnational organized crime. You need to do a full audit of, uh, of banks and how they issue loans. You need to look retrospectively at how many toxic loans we have on our books that have essentially priced uh, working Canadians out of the center of our cities, if we're talking about the young generations. And I'll end here. Look, the government is supposed to review uh, FinTrack's uh, policies and regulations every five years. Uh, they're overdue. That I have many more stories to report about how it looks like the Trudeau. Look, I'm not, I'm not saying this is all about Justin Trudeau's government. This has been happening in Canada for uh, multiple administrations. But the data I reported in my story shows Trudeau's administration is looking at money laundering less than ever. And they're not updating policies when academics now are following my journalism and saying they need to. Very quickly, Sam, before I let you go, uh, based on your many years of great reporting in this area, how much do you think this, you know, nefarious business has acted to inflate our housing prices in Vancouver and BC? In Vancouver, I believe with this latest story, uh, for me, there were still mysteries around where those homemakers and how, what housewives were getting their money. Now we know cases closed. This is the number one cause of Vancouver's housing prices. It's underground banking from China, but also Iran, other countries, uh, Vancouver, I'm talking about hundreds of billions of dollars of underground banking flowing into Vancouver and Toronto real estate. Toronto, perhaps less price impact. Vancouver, case closed. It's be you can't afford a home because of money laundering. Wow, it's crazy, Sam. Thank you for all that you do yeah, and for making time for us week in and week out and keep coming back as you're breaking these very, very important stories because shining some light on it is the first step towards solving some of these issues. We appreciate you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sam. And if you want to know more, you can actually sign up and subscribe to The Bureau. Yeah. That is uh, where Sam's funneling his journalism right now. Okay, stay tuned for another developing scandal, this one involving several NHL players charged with sexual assault. The reporter who broke many of the details, TSN's Rick Westhead, joins us next.
And let's take a breath. Let's appreciate you, our viewing party members for this week. Up for grabs, $150 at match. Joanne in Abbotsford, you're in. <laughs> Culver in North Vancouver. I haven't seen you in a while. Hi there, Culver. And of course, we got to get Cooper in here. Hi, Laura. And Linda in Vancouver. Thanks so much for watching. The viewing party is easy. Take a picture of you watching us. Send it to viewingparty at checkmedia.ca. It's brought to you by the BCRFA.